Welcome to What's New in SCM Wave 1 2023 edition. This session is being recorded on behalf of the Microsoft Corporation. We encourage you to use the Q&A panel at any time to ask questions regarding content or to request support. At the end of the session, don't forget to respond to the survey. We appreciate your feedback as we use this to improve future events. Presenting for us today from Microsoft, we have Nicole Gump and Nikhil Paldekar. I'm going to pass it over to Nicole now to take us away. Thanks, Anne. And welcome everyone to our latest installment in our What's New in Supply Chain Management uh, Tech Talk series. This one will cover our Wave 1 2023 timeframe. So I know we're a little bit later than usual, but that just means we have uh, more content we can cover uh, with you today. So let's get started. As is now customary, we have our riddle of the day to kick us off. So today's riddle is, why is it so tough working in the shipping and receiving department of a zoo? So if you think you know the answer, you can pop it into the chat. Otherwise, stick around to the end and we will uh, reveal the answer. So our agenda for today um, is the same as it, it usually is for this series, is we will start with an overview of new features kind of broadly across the supply chain business application. And then we will do a deeper dive uh, to highlight some of the specific features with uh, some demos along the way. And then we will have time at the end for Q&A. So let's get started with our overview. So we're going to start with the warehouse management module. The first feature that I want to highlight is the warehouse specific inventory transactions. This is a framework change to how we handle uh, warehouse transactions but I will be doing a deeper dive on it in the next section. We also have some new features that are related to both uh, license plate labels and container labels, as well as the printing of warehouse labels. If you are specifically interested in this topic, um, we will be doing another tech talk uh, with the engineering team just dedicated uh, to the new label printing uh, solution that we have just recently released in this wave. So stay tuned uh, for that Tech Talk invitation. We have a feature enhancement around the mobile uh, packing solution that we have previously uh, released. So this mobile device container packing policies is just an additional uh, configuration form that supports uh, some of the parameters and settings for that mobile packing solution. We then have a, uh, an enhancement to our GS1 labeling uh, feature that we have. We continue to iterate on that, and this is just the latest enhancement that we've released. Um, and hopefully you've heard, uh, this is a pretty big announcement for us, but the warehouse management mobile app can now be run on any iOS device. So in addition to supporting Android and Windows devices, as we always have, you can now run that mobile app on any iOS device as well. We then have this entire umbrella of features um, under this uh, feature name of Optimized Warehouse Management Implementation and Maintenance. This is what you may have previously heard us refer to as Ease of Implementation. And I'm going to be covering in more detail the feature set underneath of this as well um, in today's Tech Talk. And then we have um, another feature enhancement, this one specific to our transfer orders, where you can now um, cascade down any changes to the date um, at the transfer order header level uh, to the line level. Let's move on to our landed cost features. So we have um, a feature called uh, create and update containers in batch processing mode. So this allows you, if you're creating containers for landed cost, um, to asynchronously create those instead of having that run synchronously and, and tying up your user session. Then we have the split cost type uh, for multiple voyages in the vendor invoice journal. Uh, these two features were actually previously mentioned as preview features, but they are now GA in this wave. And then we have a whole host of additional features that are now in preview, and I'm not going to read all of these out to you, um, but they essentially fall um, in two buckets. Uh, the first set of features is really related to performance improvements for posting and working uh, with landed cost. And the second set of features you can see at the bottom are related to our goods in transit orders and being able to receive those on a mobile device. So this is that integration between landed cost um, and our warehouse management solution. I'm gonna move on to uh, manufacturing and asset management. 
So in manufacturing, we have a few features. Um, we have production batch balancing, enhanced on-hand grid capability, and also probably the main one here is check material availability for scheduled operations. So the production orders to release form, which is a nice form, but it only used to work if you have jobs scheduled, uh, your production orders, but now you can use that form for any type of scheduled production orders. And then you can see we've also got um, a couple of features related to improvements around using uh, the Gantt charts and the performance of the Gantt charts. And then in, in asset management, uh, the main uh, feature here is the new Power App based um, mobile experience for asset management. So we have done a tech talk dedicated to just that new mobile app. So we'll put a link in the chat um, if you're curious to um, go back and learn more about the new mobile app for asset management. And then I'm going to move on to planning optimization. Um, we've got a few features here, including a new exception process for migrating to planning optimization from classic master planning, the ability to transition to that planning optimization service one company or legal entity at a time. So you can do a, a phased rollout now instead of having to take planning optimization for all your legal entities. And then support for process manufacturing and generally uh, planning for manufacturing uh, with planning optimization. So if you're curious uh, to do a deeper dive on this, we have actually done a refresher on a, a previous tech talk we had done about planning optimization that covers um, these features that have specifically been released in wave one. So we will drop the link for that as well. And then I'm gonna hand it over to Nikhil to cover uh, the overview for procurement uh, sales, product, and some of our add-in services. Awesome. Thanks, Nicole. Hello, everyone. So I'm going to start with procurement and sourcing area. So within the procurement and sourcing, uh, the first feature we want to kind of talk about is uh, we have made improvement of security for our vendor bank account info to a workflow that we have introduced to approve the changes made on the back accounts. Next, uh, we have done improvement of the performance of the purchase order workflow, submission dialogue, and an approval dialogue. This feature improvement is in preview on like version 10.0.32 and it needs to be enabled. Next is check for the purchase order expenditure reviewers setup when activating a workflow. This feature basically prevents incomplete workflow configurations. Next, we have added a co-pilot and AI capability to help summarize purchase order changes for better decision making. The procurement uh, mobile it summarizes purchase order changes as they arrive in responses from vendors. This will help purchasing agents make better decisions by summarizing the downstream impact of the changes. Finally, in procurement and sourcing, we have added a date filter to the supply risk assessment workspace. Let's move to the next area, which is sales and marketing. Within the sales and marketing area, the first feature we have mentioned on this slide is the updating intercompany sales order lines requested dates in a header to line scenario when an intercompany sales order line is created for a purchased order. So therefore it is derived from the purchase order. Next, we have made changes to keep existing sorting or intercompany sales line when updating them. Next, we have made enhancement to use the archive solution for finance and operations apps to implement the rule-based archiving of historical sales orders and sales order lines. Then we have also made a number of enhancements to the ad efficiency in prospect to cash integration with sales. Some of the key features are, are integration between sales quotation lifecycle with Dynamics 365 sales and then process Dynamics 365 sales integration related events. There are a number of other similar features within this integration and there is uh, a documentation that will provide the links that you can you can link to further details. Next, we have made an uh, improvement on the reverse match functionality of the deductions workbench to ensure that the system correctly reinstates the previously matched amount for an open transaction. And lastly, we have enhanced the rebate management functionality, which will let you select sold to customers as an option for rebate management posting a phone source. Let's move to the next area, uh, which is part of information management. The first feature it is one of the most awaited feature that we have released uh, is basically sharing the product information across the legal entity boundaries. This feature will enable you to manage just one product record and then release and share it with all the specified legal entities. Next, 
you can now set up company specific number sequences on product information management parameter page. Then you have uh, the next feature, which basically you can now set a specific item sales tax group for any or all release products variants, both for sales and for procurement. Next feature will let you release all bonds or bill of materials or formulas that are active for a product when you release the product. And lastly, we now have released a feature that will let workers select the language in which product names and descriptions are shown for them in the user, user interface. On the next slide, we are going to cover a couple of areas, inventory visibility and pricing management. So let's look at the inventory visibility. We now have enabled soft reservation of sales order lines. This feature allows us users to create these soft reservations directly from the sales order in supply chain management. Next, we now have made it possible to offset an inventory adjustment that was previously posted in inventory visibility. And finally, it is also possible to post inventory adjustments to inventory visibility by a batch. Under the pricing management area, we now allow to manage attribute-based omnichannel sales pricing. We have also made pricing management workspace available through the preview. We'll dive deeper into the pricing management features on the following slides. I will now hand it back to Nikhil to kick off a deeper dive on some of these features. Thanks, Nikhil. Let's dive into our feature reviews. Here's a quick um, overview of what we're going to cover in this section. So I'm going to start, as I mentioned earlier, with a deeper dive on both the warehouse-specific inventory transactions framework as well as the whole set of ease of implementation features uh, that we've incrementally uh, released in this wave. And then I'm going to pass it back to Nikhil. And as he just mentioned, we're going to do a deeper dive on what's included in the new pricing management service. And then he's also going to cover in a little bit more depth uh, that cross-company uh, product sharing feature under product information management. So let's start with the warehouse specific inventory transactions. This one was released to public preview in 10.0.32. So the first release of this wave, um, you'll find it in feature management under the same name. The benefits really are improved performance and scalability. And it's really the reason we've introduced this new framework. As you can see from the screenshot on the right, um, the red line in the graphs, which is uh, the top line, represents what we're calling in our old stack. That's the current uh, warehouse inventory framework. And the green line on the bottom of the graphs um, represents what we call the new stack, which is this warehouse specific inventory transactions. So you can see that there's an exponential, right, uh, kind of performance uh, degradation that we used to have in the old stack, specifically when using any tracking dimensions with our warehouse transactions. So that would be your batch controlled items or your serialized items that you're tracking in physical inventory. Um, but you can see with this new warehouse specific inventory transaction framework enabled that that is a huge uh, performance improvement. And, and these graphs, by the way, come from our internal testing. We do have both customers and partners who have enabled and tested this feature set as part of our private and now public preview programs. If you're interested in that, please contact me afterwards. We, we are still actively um, working with customers and partners on this. The other thing I want to point out is that you can also see that not just if you're utilizing tracking dimensions, but also really for any items, even that are not tracked, uh, that this was kind of the old, more linear performance degradation we saw with the old stack, and that is much improved as well uh, with the new stack. So really, it is beneficial for anyone, even without tracking dimensions, to enable this. And it is the direction that the core product is going. So we intend in the Wave 2 release this year to make this GA and eventually we will announce uh, the deprecation of the old framework. This is a breaking change. It's the reason we're running a pretty um, extensive preview program. Uh, there's a lot of guard railing around enabling the feature to make sure um, that you can address any of those breaking changes before enabling this and using it. Um, but eventually um, the old stack will go away and this will be the core uh, functionality for warehouse inventory transactions. So the prerequisites are that when you enable the feature, there are some rules that are running to identify any breaking changes, especially around customizations. 
So you want to make sure you're on that platform update uh, 10.0.32 where we introduce this in public preview or later. But then there is also an additional feature, uh, not just enabling it in feature management, but then there are configurations that actually need to be enabled to say, you know, you want to utilize this new framework by specific warehouse process type. So by sales order picking or by inventory movements. So it allows you to kind of incrementally turn it on and test it and turn those things back off. So even if you've enabled it in feature management, it, it's not just going to start using the new stack um, until you've actually gone in and done those configurations to enable it. There are some reference links, uh, both our public documentation as well as that Yammer group um, that has all the information about the documentation, the breaking changes, the weekly office hours invites that we are still running every Thursday um, in both US and EMEA time zones uh, for people to come and ask questions as they're working with this. So uh, we'll drop those in the chat as well. All right. Let's move on to our ease of implementation and as features. This is, as I mentioned, an evolving feature set. So within the last year, we have introduced some of the first uh, ease of implementation features, things like the location directives, acceptance test, uh, that all falls under this umbrella. Uh, but we have some new features uh, in this wave as well. So I've actually got two slides because there are so many features here. So I'm going to cover them over this slide and the following one. The first feature is the introduction of a concept called warehouse groups. And I'm actually going to do a demo on this, uh, so stay tuned for more information there. The next one is also a highly requested one. And this is the ability to see your edit query data in a JSON format. So if you're using the data management framework to import or export warehouse configurations, that edit query data, or what we sometimes refer to as bubble data, used to show up in those data entities in like a hexadecimal format, which is not readable. It now will be readable um, in a JSON format. So I know a lot of people were really excited about that. The next thing from a, an insights perspective is what I'm showing on the right-hand side in the screenshot is our new warehouse management application insights telemetry. And there will be a reference link that we'll share um, if you're interested in this as well. Also, uh, we have released thousands, somewhere in the neighborhood of three to 5,000 X++ Microsoft tests that are available publicly now for you to use in your own regression testing. And then we have a whole host of features. Sorry about that. Gotta click happy. Um, a whole host of features that fall under the location directives enhancements. So we have the ability now to filter that configuration form by warehouse. You can now edit the name of the directive and actually the name of the action at the bottom after you've created it. Um, you used to not be able to do that. We have made some enhancements to that acceptance testing uh, criteria that you can enter, as well as some personalization that you can now add to the previous feature we released for previewing uh, the query results in your location directives. And the bottom link, again, is for the app insights, and we can drop that in the chat. As I mentioned, we've got some more features that fall under this ease of implementation umbrella. Um, so let's review the additional ones here. We have a couple that fall under our mobile device. So we now have the ability, like we had in the location directives that I just mentioned, to preview query results. Um, if you have an edit query that's used in one of your mobile device menu items. And we can now also auto create our main uh, mobile device menu within that warehouse wizard uh, that we introduced previously as part of this feature set. Speaking of wizards, the outbound configuration wizard now allows you to add wave containerization as part of the, the wizard setup process. And then on the right, I'm showing this new feature, which is the implementation task project. So we introduced this new workspace uh, previously, and we had you know tasks that could be imported that allow you to kind of check off and show progress on you know all the core configurations that you know we deem are um, kind of necessary to get the warehouse management module up and running. Now you can actually kind of do a phased rollout, right? Or you can create a specific implementation task project and import those tasks to kind of check them off by project instead of like for the entire legal entity. And then we have some new optimization advisor rules. These are kind of guardrails around um, some configurations, including 
location stocking limits and volumetrics, some checks for whether there's incomplete configurations in the system, as well as some additional validations around the wave template setups. The reference here at the bottom is kind of our overview landing page for getting started with setting up warehouse management. Um, and it has been updated to include these wizards that I've referenced, all of these ease of implementation um, features that should really allow you to get warehouse management up and running much more seamlessly than we've you know, heard people fret about this in the past. So hopefully this entire feature set is really beneficial. As I mentioned, I am gonna do a quick demo on the warehouse groups feature because it's simple, but very powerful. So let me um, open up my system. We're gonna do live demos because we like to live dangerously. So let me refresh my session here. All right. So what I'm going to show you is the new configuration form for warehouse groups. So if we go to warehouse management setup, it's under your warehouse section here. And you'll see that now under sites and warehouses, we have a new form for warehouse groups. There's documentation on this as well that we can also leave in the chat. So you can see I've created a warehouse group here. You just create a new one and then you can start adding existing warehouses to the group. Uh, they can be from different sites. The only caveat is that they have to be a WMS um, enabled warehouse. So pretty simple configuration, um, but the power in this really becomes where it is utilized in our other core configurations across warehouse management. So things like our location directives. If I open this form now, you will see with this warehouse groups feature, what we have is a new section um, in this configuration form called warehouse selection. You used to have to set these up and you can see this is the Contoso demo data set, right? A directive per warehouse, right? You would have to put in the site and warehouse for each location directive. But I now um, can change the warehouse selection to be that group of warehouses that I have, or I can actually create a location directive that maybe just says pick, right? This is my sales order pick, and it applies to all warehouses. So it is significantly reducing the number of configurations you have to have in here. You can see that with the demo data, I've got about 30 plus directives in here. If these applied this same configurations to that group of warehouses I have, or all of them, I could reduce these to one or two directives and just apply it to all warehouses. And then if I have this set up, I can always just go create a new warehouse, add it to my group that's existing, and it can immediately start taking advantage of all of the configurations where that group or all is selected in these configurations. That's huge. That significantly reduces the effort in me setting up a new warehouse as well. I'll show you one more uh, configuration form. There are several that it applies to and we are going to add more, um, but essentially anywhere where you used to have to specify um, configuration by warehouse, um, this applies to now. So here's one more form I'll point out, which is our wave templates. These used to be uh, by warehouse as well. And now I have that same warehouse selection tab within my wave template configuration. So again, I can change the selection here to say, you know, this shipping template, which allows me to ship sales and transfer orders can apply to a specific warehouse group or all of them. Same for any templates that I would have for uh, discrete or lean um, manufacturing with warehouse management. So super powerful, very simple configuration, but again, it's one of these features that is under our ease and implementation to hopefully help you, whether you're a customer or a partner um, and you're implementing warehouse management to really make this a lot quicker, a lot more seamless um, so that you can get up and running and really take advantage of the warehouse management capabilities. All right, so I'm gonna hand it back to the keel. Let me bring back up our deck here. Thanks a lot, that was an amazing demo. All right, so on the next slide, let's, we wanted to kind of do a quick overview on the pricing management feature in the NMS 365 SCM. So pricing management provides a set of advanced capability for managing and executing business to consumer and business to business sales pricing. With centrally managed pricing, can we use a single set of tools in Dynamics 365 supply chain management to plan, 
manage, execute, and review pricing across channels. Pricing management allows for greater control to ensure your pricing strategy is implemented as intended. Then you also have a real-time calculation available that ensures consistency of price and discount executions across channels. Built on top of commerce and then the first key unit APIs can be leveraged for integrations. An advanced rule-based engine that will help organizations meet pricing complexities and adapt quickly to changing business models. This is also driven by configurable price attributes, providing organizations with full control when it comes to segmentation of pricing. Finally, pricing management in Dallas 365 supply chain management is an end-to-end -end solution helping organizations manage pricing constructs with vendors and customers, prices, margins, discounts, and charges as well as manage rebates. We recently did a tech talk on pricing management topic and that dives deep into this particular topic. Uh, that tech talk is gonna be published very soon. Uh, and as soon as uh, it is published, we'll, we'll, uh, you'll have access to the entire recording. All right, let's move on to the next slide. Uh, where we'll talk a little bit about cost company product sharing. So the cost company product sharing feature was released on public review with version 10.0.32. Companies with many legal entities and a large product portfolio often experience significant level of duplicated product data. So this feature lets you share release product data across legal entities, thereby reducing the volume of the data that must be maintained while simplifying the task of maintaining the overall product master data. So all the key benefits of this feature are are basically it reduces the volume of the data to be maintained. And also it simplifies how you maintain your product master data. This feature is in a public preview and can be enabled through the master company data sharing setting. We also have a reference link that we are gonna paste in the chat where you can learn more about the cross company product sharing feature. I will now hand it back to Nicole to wrap us up. Nicole, over to you. Thanks, Nikhil. We have time for Q&A now. And were there any questions in the chat that we can address? Yes, absolutely. We've got, I'll start with a couple on warehouse management, Nicole. We have somebody who is asking where the X++ tests can be found that are publicly available now. I believe they're in a GitHub repro, but I will have to verify and get back with you. Okay. And then we have another question, which is asking if the warehouse groups are also replacing fulfillments, fulfillment groups. I don't believe so. Okay. And then I already kind of answered this one, but let's get your confirmation. Would there be any use of warehouse groups that benefits the planning service? For example, a universal or virtual warehouse that makes certain warehouses appear as one to evaluate product quantities as if they were part of the same warehouse. So I, I think the answer to this is no, these are kind of separate things, right? In, in planning, you either cover the site level or the site and warehouse level, and there's no plans to consider the warehouse group because that's not really the same sort of purpose, right? Yes, I would agree with that. The, the warehouse group that we've introduced here is intended to, like I said, uh, kind of help with the configuration, right, of the warehouse management is not necessarily intended to be utilized like in our planning operations right to like we're not planning to introduce a warehouse group right in that planning uh parameters if that's the question right it's a it's a separate purpose yeah so that mm -hmm. okay and then Nikhil can you confirm for me the pricing management service that has been released it's different from the d365 commerce pricing engine yes it's definitely separate from the pricing engine by the you can leverage the Thomas APIs uh, within the pricing management feature. Okay. And then we were also asked for cross-company product sharing. Are there plans to extend the functionality to include bills of materials across legal entities? And as far as I know, there's nothing currently planned, but we would expect that people would use engineering change management to do that kind of bill of material sharing across entities. That's correct. We don't we don't see um, that be the part of the word map as of now. Okay. All right, Nicole. About the container label feature, are the container labels going to be stored in a table such as license plate labels, or how is it possible to reprint a container label? Yes, I will say. Well, a there's documentation on the feature um, that you can reference, and also. As I mentioned, we're going to be doing a specific tech talk all about these new uh, labels and printing that will kind of, it's the next tech talk on my docket. Um, so stay tuned. That's going to be 
uh, coming up here um, shortly. Okay. And then the next question, Nikhil, is cross-company product sharing collaborating with the engineering change management module? Yes, we do. I mean, it, it's definitely a separate feature, but you know, we'll have some collaboration when you introduce the engineering change management. So it's possible to use this feature and have products yeah. set up as engineering products. And for pricing management, can that be shared across all legal entities? So I, I guess, I think this question is asking if price lists could be shared across legal entities. As of now, I don't believe so, but again, we, I need to confirm if that's on the roadmap. Okay. Nicole, we've got a question about how can we find the wizard to create menu items for the WMS app? Ah, uh, yes. Let me see if I still have my system up here. You will probably have to go back, I believe, in the wave to 2022, um, what's new in supply chain tech talk. So we have a a series um, landing page out on the community site for this whole series. So you should see all of the ones we've done um, over the past couple of years. And if you reference that one, you should see where we first um, introduced the wizards. Um, I did some demos and things uh, last year, but you should see that we have a new workspace for the warehouse implementation tasks, as well as our wizards. I think I scrolled too fast. I'm not seeing them offhand, but I thought probably all the way at the end. Yeah, they're all the way at the end under a tab called wizards. So if you expand that, you'll see the three, um, and I referenced a couple of them today, the warehouse management initiation wizard, and then we've got this one for inbound configuration and outbound configuration. So I think you'll want to start with this one and then work through the other two. This one is more the warehouse management parameters, that mobile device menu item one I mentioned, or menu, sorry, is in this wizard here, the warehouse management initiation wizard. So you can see it'll walk you through kind of initializing all these kind of base configurations. Awesome. How about this one? Can you use pricing management and commerce pricing engine separately within the same environment or must you pick one or the other? So you can you can use it within within the same environment. I have actually answered a very similar question here. Basically, if an order is created through supply chain management or through integrations in supply chain management, it uses the pricing management within the CM. But if the order comes through a, a commerce POS or third party system, then the same pricing management uses the CSU based pricing API to be the deal the pricing. So it can be used in the same environment. Okay. And Nicole, will the warehouse specific inventory transactions feature change any user functionality or does it just improve the performance? Yes and yes. Mostly it's for performance. So when you enable the feature and you go into your warehouse management parameters, um, this is what I was referencing before. What you'll see now um, on the general tab that you land on by default, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you have this warehouse inventory transactions mechanism uh, tab. And this is where I was referencing this warehouse scenario uh, that's listed here are all of our work order types that you see in all of our other setup forms, right? Your work templates and your location directives where you can set up configurations by work order type. So you can say, once you have this feature enabled, and again, right now in my system, because none of these are checked except for container, I was testing, <laughs> um, that if I did a raw material pick right now for a production order in one of my warehouses, it would still use the current warehouse inventory transactions framework. If I check this, any new, not existing or in process work is going to complete on the old stack, but any new raw material pick that I initiate will now use the new warehouse inventory transactions. Okay. I can at this point in time with this configuration, right? If I test it, if I run into an issue or something, I can come back in here and, and turn it back off. Right. And then the next new transaction, right, is going to then use the old stack again. But as I said, eventually we're going to move to where this is just the default stack. Um, so at some point when that is the default, this configuration will probably go away, right? And, and all of your work order types will by default just use the new stack. So that's the configuration side of it. Um, difference you're going to see if you're an implementer, right? Or an admin who's maintaining this system. But there is also, I believe, from a transaction perspective, a new form as well uh, that would be in here for uh, work 
inventory transactions. That's the one I'm looking for. So this is a a new view, right? So from a UI perspective, you know, the person asked, like, is there any difference? Um, this is really the difference in the how do you view the inventory transactions for the new framework? And this is where they're getting captured. So you can, from here, right, you can see this is kind of that work line details view, but for the new transactions, I've got a tab for the inventory dimensions that these are specific to. And as well, I can click out to the warehouse transactions from here. And this is the form where it's showing me what are those new warehouse transactions I can show, you know, omit work, work only, and again, see some of my inventory dimensions if I need to. So like you can see from my configurations, I hadn't enabled this for any picking, so nothing is in that form. Um, but this is essentially the new view when you enable that feature. Awesome. Thanks, Nicole. Nikhil, for cross-company product sharing for companies that already have duplicate data across legal entities, is there a way to walk back those duplicates? I believe that's not as simple as it sounds. Uh, and I don't think the feature comes with but to achieve that, we'll have to kind of look into how far the duplication is and kind of apply an approach to remove the duplicate before we cross share the, the product. I do think that's feedback we've heard in the preview. So the product team is definitely hearing the feedback there. Okay. Will query import export in JSON cover query data in location directives? Nicole. Yes. Awesome. That was easy. All right. Back to you, Nikhil. How will the licensing for the CSU for pricing management work? So again, uh, we don't want to kind of get too much into detail on the licensing on this, but uh, we won't need a CSU or, uh, or commerce licensing if you are only a SCM customer. Unless you are a commerce customer and you already have powers and you have orders coming through commerce, then you can always use the pricing management through the CSU. But within SCM, the CSU API has been come with the same SCM license. You don't need a central license. Awesome. Warehouse groups look awesome. Yay, Nicole. Will this also greatly reduce the processing of the auto release to warehouse? Indirectly, let me explain what I mean. So if you start using the warehouse groups for your configurations, and, and maybe I'll also take this chance to point out um, like some of the other forms that it actually applies to are like our slotting templates, things like that in containers, our container build templates. So if you're using things like containerizations in your waves, um, even the wave templates themselves, like I pointed out. Uh, so really, if we think about our release to warehouse process, right, that is triggering our wave template, which now can use the warehouse group. And then it also is running through all those methods, right, to create our work or containers, if we have containers, any replenishment work, and all of those things in those methods, since they now can utilize warehouse groups, they essentially have less records to consider, right? That's one of the things we used to see as a performance hit on release to warehouse processing time is that, say you have hundreds of location directives in here because you have one for every site, for every warehouse, and there's all these kind of duplicate records just because you had to separate them by warehouse, is that the system has to evaluate all of these, right? If the, if the last one it needs, because I released an order for this one, right, is that it has to go through all the other ones first in sequential order. So if I have far fewer records in here, and same for, you know, replenishments or containerization, right, whatever, wherever I can now use the warehouse group, then yes, in turn, it is improving performance of the release to warehouse because the system is evaluating less records to find the one it needs. Awesome. And just a real quick question. Has deprecation of the previous framework for warehouse inventory transactions been announced yet? Is there any timeline that we, we know of? No. And again, the reason is because we know it's a breaking change, right? Uh, we, like I said, we intend it's not officially official yet, I know I'm being recorded, so let me put that caveat out there, that we intend to GA, right, this framework in wave two um, of this year. I believe that's the 10.0.36 release in October or September, October timeframe that that GAs. And then once that is GA, then the engineering team can um, decide when to make the deprecation announcement. And then it's usually a full year after that, right? Two major release cycles until it is actually going to go away. So 
We will continue to talk about it, right? In every one of these series, you will hear me talk about it um, as well. We do also have on kind of our backlog of our tech talks um, because we had a, a scheduling pause there for a couple of months. Um, I, I do intend as well to do a tech talk specific to the warehouse inventory transactions with the engineering team. So awesome. don't worry, you won't miss the announcement. It's at least a year away um, from now. Um, but as I said, because it is the direction of um, the warehouse management solution, right, to utilize the new framework eventually, right, uh, going forward is that it behooves you, right, to enable it and test it now. And if you're an SI um, or an ISV that you start using it um, in your projects um, because it, it is going to be the core. Okay. And that's why, I mean, we do previews for so long and it's important mm -hmm. for people to test and previews so we can make sure that by the time it comes to deprecation, we can handle everybody on the new new features. Exactly. Okay. We've got a few more questions to get through before we wrap up. Nikhil, any GA date for pricing management? It's in preview right now, but we don't have a specific date set yet. Uh, I will confirm and, and get back on that. Uh, I think do. that too depends on the initial feedback, right? The, the reason we leave things in public preview is because it's easier to change the code on them. We won't go to GA until we feel confident that. Yeah, um, until all the feedback, like a lot of feedback has been already captured and some of the bugs are also captured. Yeah. Okay, Nicole, what version is the JSON edit query available in? Do you know? I believe it's 35. Give me just a second. I was trying to pull up an additional like slide with some detail on that. Uh, that might help us. So just a second. Let me see if I can find it quickly enough here. Okay. While you're finding that, mm -hmm. we had a question about warehouse management inventory and pricing having co-pilot features. So I believe there was an announcement last week about co-pilot coming. And I think basically what we can say at this moment is keep an eye out on the wave two release mm -hmm. notes. Other than what we specifically announced, the Wave 2 release notes should be coming out in the next few weeks. So yeah, keep an eye out for that. Yeah, uh, that's a good point. And uh, I think Nikhil mentioned one AI co-pilot scenario in the procurement and sourcing area. And then as Ann just mentioned, yeah, uh, be on the lookout, right? Of course, across all the business applications, that's really the focus um, is to enable a lot of these co-pilot scenarios. Um, so you will also be hearing more about that. We know it's kind of top of everyone's mind. Let me see if I can um, do this without breaking everything. Do you guys Go see ahead. the, sorry, this is on the yes. previous question. Okay. So this is the example. It is actually um, already there as of 10.0.30. So this is something that kind of got glossed over, lost, if you will, in the cracks of all the other um, things we've been releasing in this wave, but it is there. Um, so here's the um, kind of snippet of what this looks like. Beautiful. Much better than our hexadecimal nonsensical um, query data. Awesome. And you can see um, this is for a location directive, and I think somebody asked about that specifically earlier. Okay. Um, is there an option to skip certain setup steps within the warehouse management initiation wizard? Um, I believe so. I'm like, if, if you don't do certain things like, you know, wave containerization or or things like that, you know, the really what they tried to put in that initiation wizard are the things that you must set up, right? Like, your location types, your location profiles, um, in order to essentially have the kind of bare minimum to get a warehouse up and operational. Okay. We have another question asking, can we expect to see a demo of the process mining for warehouse material movement? They're particularly interested in learning the licensing that's needed for it because the license on the power platform side wasn't really clear from the published documentation. Yes. Uh, please reach out to me afterwards. We've been talking about the process mining scenarios, both kind of in the forums of our focus group in warehouse management, as well as in the customer advisory board session that we did last month. So we have been doing some demos on it, um, and I can connect you with the right engineering resources to get your questions answered. Awesome. And then the last question, what is the difference between inventory transactions and warehouse specific inventory transactions? Does this warehouse specific inventory work only for WMS enabled warehouses? Yes, it's only for WMS enabled warehouses. And the difference really is what we're calling that old stack and new stack, right? So warehouse inventory transactions, you can say are like what is today, right? The warehouse transactions that you would see. And maybe I can quickly pull my system up one more time. If I would go into, let's say like my work 
I would have warehouse transactions right tied to each of my work lines. Let me see if there's anything hopefully just sitting out here in my demo data. But the warehouse specific inventory transactions, that's that's the name of the the new stack, right? The one that you have to go into feature management and enable that is going to kind of be the future of how we handle uh, warehouse transactions for performance reasons, right? So I've got a transfer issue out here. If I've got a line selected down here, right? I, if I click into transactions, these are my warehouse inventory transactions today, right? If I turn on the warehouse specific inventory transactions in that warehouse management parameters configuration I showed for the work order type of transfer issue, I would now have warehouse inventory transactions that are using that new stack. So they would look a bit different. It's a breaking change. Really the breaking change is that it is now decoupled from invent trans and that's why it's so much more performant is because obviously that inventory transactions table is being hit by the entire business application, you know, many different modules and many different processes. So by decoupling the warehouse inventory transactions from the core embed trans table, and we've got some new tables that support the new warehouse specific inventory transactions. Again, if you're interested in the technical detail, we have a uh, videos, office hours, the Yammer channel, and you can also just reach out to me. I'll get you connected to the right things. And we will look to do a tech talk on it as well to kind of elaborate. Um, but that's the difference, right? Old old stack versus new stack, essentially. Okay. We had two more questions come in. So first one is, is there any talk of looking at copying directives across work order types in the future? I think we already support that as part of the stuff we did before, the the first release of the ease of implementation features, there is a copy function now. Okay. Um, and then the edit query JSON export, is that available on every data entity, including edit query option? If it's warehouse related, yes. If you're talking about some other form, like an engineering change management, I can't promise that. But if it's, if it's a warehouse specific uh, form, like this one here, uh, where you've got an edit query and you've got a data entity behind it, then yes, for sure. Somebody else is asking, how can I subscribe to a test environment in order to be able to test application updates, versions, and new features? If you are a partner or ISV in the channel, there is a special license that you can ask for, which basically allows you to get a tier two environment at a lower cost than than otherwise. So if that's if that's your situation, then I would suggest that you look into that. I don't have a link handy, but if you reach out to us after the fact, we can help you with that. I'm just trying to get through the three new questions that popped up. So somebody's saying, so warehouse transactions basically removes the new work invent trans records to the new table. Summary? Yes. There are a couple of new tables, I believe. But again, uh, check the Yammer channel for technical details. There's documentation out there. Okay. And then can, can it be done company specific? use the old way for some companies and new ways for other companies? I believe so, since it's parameterized in the module parameters. Okay. Are warehouse specific inventory transactions only related to work related transactions or all types of transactions like sales orders, purchase orders? Just work transactions. I see the comment. No, it's not. It's not anything that's a journal or anything that what, what we would consider inventory management or WM2, right? Like non WMS enabled warehouse transactions. It's just for the warehouse management. Okay. That um, brings us to the end of our hour. So I'm going to, to wrap us up and close us out. Nicole, do you want to flash up the slide with your contact information? Yes. But oh, and let's answer digital. our riddle. Um, so why is it so tough working in the shipping and receiving department of a zoo? Because no one ever addresses the elephant in the room. All right. So yeah, quickly here, let me flash you the contact information. So that's Nikhil and I's email addresses, as well as our uh, LinkedIn these are clickable when you get the uh, slide deck after this is published. And then I'll hand it to Anne to just wrap us up here. All right. Thanks, Nikhil and Nicole. We've come to the end of today's tech talk. Your feedback is essential. Please complete the session evaluation using the link that I posted in the meeting chat. This concludes our session. Thank you again and enjoy the rest of your day.